Okay, so people are always asking me how I uh, process my images after I've shot. Um, first off, I always shoot in RAW, uh, just simply because this is exactly why, <laughs> this is a prime example of why you shoot in RAW. Uh, the lighting was pretty terrible, but um, I didn't actually have my flash with me, I only had the camera flash, so I got what I got. So I'm going to show you a prime example of why shooting in RAW is fantastic. So when I open it, um, you can change pretty much every single aspect of the image itself. Um, I can change all the blacks so they're giant, you know, they actually stand out. I can change the highlights, uh, the contrast of the image, um, the white balance, everything about it. So it's pretty fantastic. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit auto, which is actually terrible, but um, just so that it does shows you what it's going to look like. It's horrible, but uh, we're going to tweak that. So I'm going to go ahead and it's kind of pink, so I'm actually going to tone down the pink just a little bit and um, and bump up the yellow in the white balance because the sand is yellow and the sky was very yellow. Uh, contrast, I'm going to take the highlights out and you'll notice that the clouds actually start showing up in the background. Bump up the blacks a little bit so you actually see the seashell that comes into play. Tone down the whites so that the white, because a lot of the, it pulls the white image. You can also look at your um, histogram to double check what you're doing. Uh, you want some over on each side. You don't want just one giant thing in the middle. That gives you the, the contrast of the image. So the clarity, it's a very clear image anyways. Uh, saturation and vibrance brings out the colors and the highlights in the image. I try not to tweak too much of the color. Um, shadows, so you'll be able to see, bump up all the shadows, but I'm actually going to increase the shadows once I get into Photoshop too. I don't want to bring it up too much. Um, so already you can see a huge change in the image. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and open it up here in just a second. So just right there you've seen a huge difference. So once in Photoshop I try not to do too much. I go ahead and always duplicate my layer so I can always go back and delete it. That way I don't even, you know, I can go as far as I want and then delete that layer if I don't like it. Um, I usually end up with like four or five layers in my images just because I'll have four or five different ways I like the image and I'll see which one's the best so that's kinda how I usually do it but everybody's different um, so what I try to first start out with is looking at my levels uh, I don't really like on this picture it it tries to auto correct the foreground to make it darker so it matches the background I don't like that um, I kinda want the foreground is the whole point of this image um, so I want that to be the focal point not really gonna mess with that too much um, the shadows and highlights um, I am gonna mess with that because that's this image is gonna be you know I've already preset it um, so I've taken the amount of shadows and increased so that there's more light in the shadows um, I've messed with the highlights um, one thing I'll do is actually tone that down so you can see some of the darker clouds in the background. Uh, the radius of, of the actual highlight. So we're getting kind of, kind of close to where we're wanting to go with this. See there's a radius around the seashell and I'm trying to actually tone it out just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take this and pull the highlights down so that you have, you can actually see the clouds in the background. They're not, they're supposed to be blurred out um, by the way I, sh I shot the image when I composed it because uh, this is obviously my focal point.
So we're going to continue. We're going to take a look at the radius. See, I've actually gotten it pretty good. Um, the one thing I do not like is this highlight in the, uh, in the uh, off in the background because the clouds kind of just, you don't see them. They're supposed to be blurred, but you don't see them. So I'm actually going to turn the highlight down just a little bit more so you actually get uh, some clouds in there um, or some, th some depth in the clouds. Uh, boom, 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 boom. And you can see I'm changing. Uh, I think that's getting there pretty close to where we want it, um, so that this is your focal point. Okay. So we went from here to here just with using the shadow and highlight tool in Photoshop to make sure that this is, you know, really, you know, here's our leading line, kind of pulling your eye towards it, and obviously here is our focal point in our image. Um, so the next thing I want to do is actually bring out the sunset just a little bit in the background. So I'm going to use selective color, and I'm going to go to my reds and yellows, and I'm going to increase it by just a few. Uh, magenta, which will turn it kind of pink. And blacks make it darker or lighter, really, kind of pulling it out. Yeah. Take our yellow. And I just want subtle color changes. I don't want drastic color, color changes because I want to try to get exactly what I saw in the image. Um, just using my memory and also um, I don't want to make it look fake by any means. Um, so that's pretty darn good. That's pretty close to what it was. It was kind of an orangey sunset. Um, notice that my horizon is not straight uh, because I was shooting pretty low. Can't really do that. So what you need to do in Photoshop is come up here to your straighten tool uh, right here where it here's your uh, level tool and you're gonna draw a line from here across to make sure so this is my horizon and it will tell you um, kind of where you are actually Mm, that's actually worse. So what I'm going to do, because that's technically, I guess, my horizon right there. And that'll straighten it right up. So we've straightened our horizon, um, uh, let's see here, the last thing I really want to do is I want to test uh, what it will look like in HDR, uh, just for the heck of it. So I'm actually going to go uh, HDR toning, because it looks pretty darn good and you know just like it is, but I kind of want to just make it just a little smidge a little better. Um, this is not an exact science by any means. It's just what you think is will make the picture look better. So my uh, HDA, HDR toning tool comes up right here. Um, they've got some presets. Right now it's just on default. But look right here. You notice that it's kind of blown out um, because of you know the radius and strength. So if I tone that down it would take away some of the uh, blown outness. Um, 
I'm actually going to go with just regular saturated. See what that does. Um, make it just slightly darker, not much. Exposure. I want to just make it just a little more exposed. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe right there. Detail. People can go overboard with HDR and uh, really mess it up. So you have to be very, very careful, like very careful with your images uh, when dealing with HDR because you can get some really funky stuff going on. Some people do it really well and some people just mm, not so much. But I guess art is all in the eye of the beholder, so can't say much. Turn this vibrance down just a little bit. So yeah, that's pretty much done. I like it. So that's pretty much how I process all my images. Um, I just kind of go through. It's not an exact science. Uh, I usually go through a few steps and there you go. We went from uh, that here's our original So here's our original, and here's our completed picture edited and processed and everything. So, you know, I just, with about five minutes of editing and a little knowledge here and there, uh, you can make your images just that much better. Uh, have fun, and trust me, it's not an exact science by any means.